said I was gonna do a bookshelf tour, so here we are. Obviously, I have a shit ton of uh, knickknacks. We've got my Kylo Ren shrine. Got my spider cube. Got a lot of stuffed animals spread around. We have another Spider Man. Then we have my little snack shelf. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Fun story about the shelf itself, this, this big one right here. That was a bookshelf at the church I used to go to when I was little. They replaced them, so I was able to get a bookshelf for free. And then the one at the top is a bookshelf that I made in junior high, as is evident by the fact that there's that a very, very very cringy painting on the side so yeah then we have my lounge lizard on top who still does not have a name because i haven't decided anyway up here at the top are some of the books that i kind of consider to be like some of my faves except the rupee car uh poetry books those are just there because there really isn't anywhere else to put them um i have carry on by rainbow rowell Great book, Challenger Deep by Neil Shusterman. One of my favorite books that I'm going to reread soon and will definitely be doing a review on. Uh, Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. The Secret History by Donna Dart. I just realized I should do it this way. And then, of course, Milk and Honey and the Sun and Her Flowers, which, like, I personally don't mind her poetry books that much. They're enjoyable enough for me. And then we have All for the Game, which I have not finished reading. And then we have The Raven Cycle, which I have also not finished reading. And that's all the ones I have on that. And then here, here's going to be fun because I have so many things in the way. So if I just move Pusheen and the dragon and Peter Pan. And then Ant-Man. And then there you go. So we have my classics up here. The Great Gatsby, Peter Pan by J.M. Barry, I believe. Frankenstein, Lord of the Flies, Scarlet Letter, Secret Garden. I have read that one, that one, and that one. And I liked all three of them. Like that one the most. Then I have Pop Goes the Weasel by M.J. Aldridge. Arledge. Oops. I've not read it yet. I have not read Book of Dead Days by something Sedgwick. Marcus Sedgwick. Um, and then Memoirs of a Geisha. I keep fucking around with the camera by Arthur Golden. We have Smack by, I'm assuming I think his name is Anthony. Melvin. Melvin Burgess. I'm dumb. Silence of the Lambs by Thomas Harris. Michael Limo's Dead Souls, and then my collection of Edgar Allan Poe, which is the only horror that I own, so that's fun. And then we have the Face on the Milk Carton series by Carly Caroline B. Cooney. There's Whatever Happened to Jane, a voice on the voice on the radio, and what Janie found. I guess what happened to Janie. Uh, those are the ones that come after the first one, which is this one. And then I have my two Michael Crichtons. Which are Rising Sun and the Andromeda Strain. Hey, that's funky fresh. We have my cute little Adam. So, let's replace the knickknacks. Perfect. Next shelf. The beanie, ba the beanie baby shelf. I'll move these out of the way. And that just for a second. I have my box set of Twilight that I said that I have. On top of that, I have this little kid's book about owls that my mom got me. Then I have all my Kathy Reich's books. Um, I like Kathy Reich's for the most part. I've read that book and that book so far. I really liked this one. This one wasn't that bad. Um, she's an adult fiction author. And I'm not really big on adult fiction. I don't know why, but I liked one of her books, so I bought a shit ton of them at a used bookstore. So I have, what, seven other ones to read? 
Uh, they're all from the same series. They are all from the Temperance Brennan series, which is the book series that inspired the show Bones. So that's fun. And then I have that, The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime by Mark Haddon. It's apparently the favorite book of one of my friends, so that's why I picked it up and that's why I'm going to try and get around to reading it, hopefully soon. And then we have The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo series by Stieg Larsson. So there's the first one. The second one, The Girl Who Kicked the Cornet's Nest. And then the third one, The Girl Who Played with Fire. I don't... I think I'm missing... The fourth one, I think the fourth one is something about a spider web. I got these all at a library sale. Um, library book sale along with pretty much, oh, fuck. All three of those and then those two and that one. And then pretty much all of my classic lit except Lord of the Flies I got from my friend. And then... The, the Janie one, <laughs> the face in the milk garden and smack were from my aunt. And then everything up there is something that I either bought or that was bought for me for Christmas. So those ones are actually brand new, but then most of the other books that I own are not. I also have Joy Felding's Heartstopper, which is like a, another adult fiction novel, I guess. It is about a crime, I believe. Can't fully remember. I had a bunch more like this, and I got rid of a lot of them just because I was like, I'm never going to read these. I have The Children of Hoodin by J.R.R. Tolkien. J.R.R. Tolkien. Um, don't know when I'm ever going get to get, get around to it. And honestly, once I do get around to it, it'll probably be like really difficult to actually like understand because I don't have enough backstory of the rest of his um, lore. So we'll see. But I do want to read it eventually. Then Flowers in the Attic by V.C. Andrews, which is a classic. Uh, apparently it's the one where the brother and the sister end up falling in love with each other because they are trapped in the attic the entire time. I don't know. All the Bright Places by Jennifer Neven. Niven. This is a book that a lot of my friends really, really loved. So when I was able to pick up a copy of it, I did so that I could read it. And then Wilberforce by H.S. Cross. Um, it's a book about prep school boys, and it was a dollar because it was at Dollar Tree. So if it turns out to suck ass, I'm out a dollar. I don't give a fuck. So then let's replace the Beanie Baby and my little honey, my cup, my college cup. Even though I don't go to this college anymore. I went there for a couple classes when I was dual enrolled. And then we have the next shelf, which is specifically meant to be, like, my, um, my more, like, young adult fiction that isn't stuff that I love. Also, the stuff all the way up there that's young adult fiction just does not fit down here. So that's part of the reason why it's not here. So, starting over here, we have The Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan. And the rest of the Percy Jackson series, because of course we do. Above that, there's Sharon Draper's Out of My Mind. And then Mary Downing Helen... No, Mary Downing Hans' Wait Till Helen Comes, which I have not read. But um, apparently uh, people that I know really liked it. Then there's the False Prince and the rest of the Ascendance trilogy, which was one of my favorite series of all time. And actually, my name... Jaren uh, was picked from this book series. I saw the name Jaren Eckbert in the first one and I was like, that's my name now. <laughs> so I, I need to reread that series at some point. Beside that, my little squishy Spider-Man, beside that is the Keys to the Kingdom series, which I have the paperbacks, which is unfortunate because the covers for these are fucking ugly as hell. But this is another one of my favorite series, and oh boy, I got a story about Lord Sunday and how long it took for me to be able to read the last book of the series. This is one that I'm also planning on rereading, and honestly, this is one that I want to reread very soon. And it's one that I definitely do want to make a video- like, I want to make a video about both of these, but this is the one that I'm, like, really kind of wanting. And then we have- 
Raina Telgemeier's Smile. I love Smile. Um, I've read it many times, as you can tell, by the spine being bent. And every time that I'm, like, really depressed and I need to pick me up, I feel like I always go to that book and I always read it because it's, it's a really easy read and it's just really fun and it's got a good message to it and it, it delivers it very succinctly. And then we have The Red Pyramid from the Kane Chronicles by Rick Riordan, which I still have not read, even though I've tried multiple times. And it's not even because I don't like it, it's just because other things have gotten in the way. So I definitely want to actually, like, read it all the way through and then read the rest of the series. And then also do that for every other Rick Riordan series that's in, like, the the uh, mythology verse, I guess. The Riordan verses I've been calling it for a while. Just so I can um, get caught up, because I'm not. And then all of these are the Georgia Nicholson series. The Confessions of Georgia Nicholson. And it's been hard. Keep the Kylo Ren and then the girl who's not Rey but is 100% Rey. Anyway, these books have been so hard to get through. Like, five and six were such a fucking, like, trial. And number th book three was also not that good, but I'm going to finish them because my mom told or bought the one, all the ones that are diff like these three I got for my aunt a long time ago and then my mom bought three and then five through ten for me for Christmas because I'd been wanting the complete series and so I'm gonna have to read them at least once to just not like have my mom waste have wasted money but like they just have not been that fun and I feel like these books really encapsulate kind of the things that early 2000s young adult fiction does that turns so many people away from it. Um, above it, we have book one of a series of unfortunate events by Lemony Snicket. It's the bad beginning. Um, I only have that because my uncle was getting rid of it. Uh, and I grabbed it instead of letting it sell at the book, at the garage sale. And then we have The Sister to the Traveling Pants. Again, my aunt, I believe, had the first three and then she bought me the last one at a used bookstore. That's another one that I need to read. I think I got through the first book and then I started the second one and other things came up and I wasn't able to, but I definitely do want to read it because it's a classic. And then we have the first five books of the Amulet series by, what's his name? I want to, I think it's Kazu Kibuishi. Kazuki Buishi. I was right. I saw the Kibuishi and I thought his name was Kazu, so I was correct for once. I actually remembered. Uh, but there's three more books in the series after these ones that are released now, and then there's a ninth one, I believe, that's coming out sometime. Um, I need to reread those ones, and then I need to get my hands on the other three because I really liked it, and it's just a good little... It's a good little series. I like it a lot. And then my last one. Whoop. There it is. It's a lot of magazines, bullshit, and then some snacks. Not all my snacks are down here. I had to move them because they were in the way. Put Spider-Man back in his little duct tape thingy. So we've got actually two hardback like Disney books. It's Bambi and it's literally just the story of Bambi, the movie. And then uh, this little Winnie the Pooh book. It's cute. This has a bunch of trading cards from, like, those, um, Zoo Books magazines. I have uh, an Owl's copy of Zoo Books, because I really like owls. I have a copy of Vogue, and then two Vanity Fairs. Cute little kids book called Little Fox Goes to the End of the World. It's by Anne Tompert with John Walner art. It's cute. I liked it. I have three old copies of Shonen Jump that have chapters of manga in it. Obviously, that's fun. I have a National Geographic that focuses on owls, because, you know, I have an old-ass Betty Crocker cookbook that I got a long time ago. Then I have this giant-ass dictionary, 
And then I have two German to English dictionaries. This one uses like a really fancy font for the German and it's really hard to read and then the English is a normal one. This one's just normal. <laughs> With my snacks, that doesn't matter. Um, that's my resume. These are stickers and my um, word search and such. And then I have my manga books. This was the first one. It's These three are by Christopher Hart. Chris Hart. This was the first one that I ever looked at. This is what got me into drawing manga, and this is the entire reason why I like manga. <sighs> and it was a library book, and I was the only person who was checking it out, so she gave it to me. Don't know if she got in trouble for that. And then that one, the Magical Girls one. Oh, don't go back. That one my mom got me for Christmas. And then these two I bought on my own from Hobby Lobby, and neither of them have really helped me at all. Not by Lack of Trying by Camilla de Erico and Chris Hart, just, I don't know, I don't find art advice to be that helpful. Don't know why. Probably because I'm really bad at putting it into play. Anyway, I just realized I didn't list off any of the names of my Kathy Reich's books, or The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants, or any of these, so... I'm not gonna do it. So yeah, that's funky fresh. Oh yeah, you can see my little owl mug back there, my Kylo Ren mug. I have another one, it's a big mug and it has multiple owls on it, it's like two or three of them. But I don't have it with me. Anyway, that's, that's my bookshelf. Hope you enjoyed, and I hope seeing all the different books that I have gave you an idea as to what kind of reader I am. <laughs>